Smiled on. Okay, got it. But she didn't smile. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. You're right, Dad. It's starting to clear up. Still freezing, though. Definitely should not have drunk all that coffee. Hmm. Hey! <laughs> That's a keeper. Uh, nothing quite like being outside. I'm just saying, I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff, if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was gonna be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. I know, Dad. You're always serious. Doesn't being out here make you want to chill out? Well, to tell you the truth, I haven't been out here in 20 years. Don, don't you think you could find something more interesting to photograph? Last time I was with my brother Calvin. Man, that was a great trip. Your grandpa Sven taught us how to fish. How to build a fire. We found an old logging trail. There were deer everywhere. I bet if I could remember where that trail was, we'd spot a buck for you in no time. Dad! Guys, Don. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of you. Great shot, Don! I can't believe this game actually <laughs> made me take a picture of... <laughs> of that. And this. I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember that, okay? Dad, it it's twitching. I think That's it's totally so normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about Dad! Oh. Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. The story of Sam. Instead of hiding from death, Sam seemed to go out of his way to meet it. After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot.
Look at him. So happy. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. This one is the one I enjoy the most. I mean, because of I think look he at saw it. Things the rest of us don't. This was so fun. I enjoy doing this a lot. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> All the characters that I play. Hello, Gregory, it's time to. Hold on, sweetie. Hello. I enjoy this the most. I don't know why. Sam, I told you I don't want to talk right now. I oh. wonder what he saw. Oh. What his world is like. Mm -hmm. Gregory. Damn. I mean, this is just the story itself is so strong. I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, and yet. Gus. 
A poem for Gus, who always said the wedding was a bad idea. Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard, before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met her, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. When the time for photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign held up his middle finger. <laughs> the wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. Oh no. Maybe we should like stop playing the kite. The rain came down in buckets then, but no one seemed afraid that nature might destroy the tent our dad had crudely made. Thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power, but all my father said to this was, make the music louder. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. <sighs> she spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay.
Religion was another thing my mom never talked about, but I think it helped her a lot after her dad died. My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Louis was born a year later. When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, things were good, almost normal. But it didn't last. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. Like Milton Finch in The Magic Paintbrush. for when Milton disappeared. You see, the thing is, I was going to say something, but, but I stopped myself before I even see, or after you guys seen what happened to Milton, but that was something I didn't understand, how he disappeared. It was pretty short and simple, but still, I, I don't know, all you know that he was Mom spent months searching for my brother. And she sealed the doors. <gasps> Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. My man just stepped into the painting of what he made and disappeared. He said, see you later. Mom definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery. room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. Lewis and I spent a lot of time playing games together, but he was surprisingly bad at them. He died a lot. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery, but he withdrew part of himself. 
In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to... wonder. Oh, wow. I asked him to describe it. So basically, I'm multitasking here. He said he started small. Imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. So I'm controlling the arm on the right. And controlling the little guy on the then left. something moved. Bats. And toads. Things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss, but he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Where's my fish? Thank you. Like a whole new Lewis. I'm probably multi right now. <laughs> so I let him go on. I even encouraged him. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. Songs for them to play. Oh, guy with the arms. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And he was always humming something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. Oh, more he no fish. longer spoke at the cannon. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him that all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination. So he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Louisville. St. Louis. The map is getting bigger, yo. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis. Until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. I'm trying to control Even my right arm. Even as his mother arm. pleaded with him. Arthur Lewis kept sailing on. Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a last time I went for the queen, but now it's beautiful so prince. The prince was on his own quest for.
radiant rainbows. Ah. Yeah, these things I keep knocking off. Well, I'm supposed to knock them off. No, I'm not. He followed the sound of his. Silver Hawk. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. So the map got even bigger, yo. Oh my he knew God. the world was all in his imagination. But he was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. Fish, For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. Is that him? He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. Okay. Dude, you gone crazy. Oh wow. I still thought I could save him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. The palace would be packed with his companions. Hey. Hey. Including the wise Calico who'd insisted on advising him. His prince waiting, holding his crown. There was only one thing left to do. And the rest I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him.
Damn. My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. He was so proud of being Indian. I think for him, it was a way to be something other than just a finch. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Last day, Edie just watched his pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last- I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. Oh, well, dang. You kicked out, dang. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. That thing you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house. Edith has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your story. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning. Okay. Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. It was the first and last time I ever saw the old house aground. There'd been an earthquake out in the middle of the ocean. They called it the lowest tide in a thousand years. God, it smelled awful. You know, I've seen that house every day of my life. I never thought I'd go back to it. When the fog rolled in, I lost my way. It's not hard to find, just keep going straight. It was like right there. 
I got turned around. Okay, that wasn't there before. For a while, I wandered. I started seeing things. Things I'd forgotten had ever existed. But when I saw them, they felt like old friends. That night, a lot of things came back to me. Or maybe I came back to them. Things I can't explain, but that I need you to try and... Edith, what are you doing in here? It's mine. Edith! Mom, you're gonna rip it! Let go! I kicked and screamed, but... Mom dragged me to the car. I never saw Great Grandma Edie again. The next morning, the band came to pick her up, but she was already gone. After that, we moved around a lot. We both tried to make the best of it. This is a weird way to continue the story. A few years went by. My mom didn't like to talk about it. But she started getting sick a lot. <coughs> the rest happened pretty quickly. She got better for a while. And then she didn't. And then I was alone. The last finch left alive. Until I found out about you. I'm still not sure what to tell you about all this. If we lived forever, maybe we'd have time to understand things. But as it is, I think the best we can do is try to open our eyes and appreciate how strange and brief all of this is. This journal was supposed to be for you. But now I hope you'll never see it. I just want to meet you and tell you all these stories myself. But I guess if you're reading this now, things didn't work out that way. This is where your story begins. I'm sorry I won't be there to see it. It's a lot to ask, but I don't want you to be sad that I'm gone. I want you to be amazed that any of us ever had a chance to be here at all. Good luck.
and that's it you guys the end of what remains of Edith Finch um, I guess this is all the creators that play the game technical director lead technical artist lead artist wow this game did a really good job on it um, for me like I feel like the message is really deep I can't put it all together I can try but I'm not going to because I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer to it but you know hit me up comment what you guys think about what's really under this message or how do you guys feel whose story or what story gave you a little eh or who really touched you the most to me it touched me it was really shocking to me was Walter how he was under the house the whole time and nobody knew or the mom didn't say anything to anyone wow so yeah what you guys think let me know about it the game is awesome I like it I like how it was designed like you had to search around the house of every Finch story of what happened to them before they died or how they died some just disappeared and we don't know how or when or what took them for example Barbara was very dramatic to me of her story but yeah thank you guys for watching you guys are the gamers this has been a Finch story I believe this is all the story I believe I went I went through everyone I hope I did I do everyone I didn't miss not one person that I just let me know if I didn't miss anyone but I think I got everyone yeah I think I got I went out through everyone <sighs> thank you guys for watching you guys are the gamer look forward to the walking dead and life is strange too until we meet again I